Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So um, here we are, ready to get started on a new week. We are today um, getting started on our second week. However, it is still going to be our class number four, which basically means that it's um, still part of the first week. But anyhow, um, I hope you guys are ready. I hope you had an amazing time with your families and this um, relatively long weekend for many. Hopefully you did have the chance, you know, to have a day off on Friday and enjoy it with your family or um, your friends or whoever it was that you wanted to spend time with. So um, as you can see, I am back at my regular self. I do not have any scars left or anything else. I mean, I do have a scar, but still, it's not really that bad. Uh, but yeah, I'm back at it again. And um, let's see, for tonight, we are... All right, thank you for letting me know, Claudia. Um, so we are going to be working, or still going to work on family, okay? We're going to be the Toreros tonight because uh, the main topic is going to be family. Um, then we are going to um, cover a little bit of the reading. I told you about last week that we were going to practice um, a reading. So we're going to do that. And if we have time, um, I have here a list of extended family members. When we talk about extended family, as you guys noticed last time, um, we include many, many, many parts of it. Uh, but yeah, we are going to cover um, extended family. And I don't think it's going to happen. But if it does come to happen, um, we might be also touching base with what modal verbs in the past are. Now, if you were wondering, before we um, start with the topic and everything, Modal verbs are a specific verbs that we use in English to talk about things like um, necessity, to talk about things like um, likelihood, ability, permission, requests, which are, you know, synonyms, um, capacity, suggestion, order, obligation, those sorts of things. So those are like the, the main things that we are going to mention when we talk about modal verbs. Now, we have some modal verbs that work in the present, which are basically the most common ones. But um, we are also going to be, as I said, touching base with modal verbs that are referred mostly to the past. Now, before any of that, um, here comes the part that I like about Mondays. And uh, last Friday, I mean, Thursday, yeah, last Thursday, in my mind, we were not having the last class. So I basically forgot, completely forgot that I have one question that I like to ask you guys every time we are at the last class of the week. Um, but yeah, this, I think it was the very first time since I started um, teaching here that I didn't ask for plans, you know, for this week. But there is also another custom, which is on Mondays. Mondays are normally to talk about how the weekend went, you know, how or what activities we did. Um, how was our time? Like, how was our, our, our family or the time we spent with family and friends? And uh, that is going to be the question for tonight. So you guys uh, know and have it clear. Basically, that's it. All right. So how was the weekend? Basically, just that. All right. Um, so I would like to get started with that. You know that it's, it's, it is basically just a practice. I want you just to explain some of the things that you did. If you do not remember how to say something, we're here to help. We're here to learn. So don't feel ashamed. Just say, you know, I don't remember how to say this, how to say that. So, yeah. Uh, but that is basically the starter. How was the weekend? We're going to start probably by listening from, uh, let's see, Melanie. In your case, Melanie, how was your weekend? It was good. I I spent the whole weekend uh, in the house with my family and watch movies. Great. So your weekend and mine are basically very very similar. I spent my weekend on this in a very similar manner. Um, I had a visit with I mean from family members. We went to the beach for almost just to have lunch. But the rest of the time was basically just spent, you know, watching movies. And this weekend, I had the chance to bond a lot more with my two sisters. And uh, yeah, 
we had a very, very nice time watching movies with them. So great. It is a very nice way of spending the weekend. Um, okay, now let's see if we can hear from you, Lorena. How was your weekend? Well, it was, was okay. I was doing many things at home. And on Sunday, I have time to go to the to church. I spent time all the morning there. All right, great, very nice. So you were able to run some errands or do, you know, things in the house and then also go into church. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, spending some time at church is also something that um, relieves the soul. It makes makes us feel better. So great. Very, very nice way and very useful way of spending the weekend. Great. All right, moving on. How about we hear from Josue? In your case, Josue, how was your weekend? Uh, this weekend, I took advantage about... Uh... How do you say uh, invertir? Investments. Invertir dinero. Sí, Investment. Invest, Invest investments. money. Yes. Yeah. about that? Okay, so you were investing this weekend. Then. Yes. All right, that's great. It's not that bad. One second. Sorry, one second. Oh, por cierto, solo para... Comentarles, aquellos que estén tratando de ingresar a la plataforma, se supone que ahorita hay problemas, por si lo intentan, ¿verdad? Y no les funciona, si les funciona, qué bueno. Eh, pero, um, si aún ustedes no, si aún intentan ingresar, eh, no se preocupen, puede, por ratos pasa eso, por ratos hay, hay caídas, ¿verdad? De, de la plataforma, entonces, um, Tengan cuidado, o sea, y pues no, no va a funcionar, digamos, um, de momento. Sí, y es lo que estoy ahorita revisando, que están informando, ¿verdad? Que, que hay problemas y que pues les digamos que ahorita eh, está caída y hay, hay muchas personas a las que les está fallando. Así que un momentito nada más. Bueno, entonces, um, solamente eso, ¿verdad? Si ustedes pensaban trabajar hoy, eh, al menos de momento, no está funcionando al 100% y pues esperemos que pronto regrese a su a estado natural o normal. No sé, ustedes me mencionaban algunos, ¿verdad? Que estuvieron en descanso desde hace bastante tiempo, parece que marzo dijeron por ahí, no me acuerdo. Pero eh, en los últimos meses, o bueno, ahora que han regresado, no sé si han notado una diferencia, porque en mi caso me ha pasado bastante, y lo menciono porque pues son cosas importantes a veces que tomar en cuenta, ¿verdad? En mi caso me suele pasar mucho que se tarda a veces hasta cinco minutos para cargar, o a veces me da error y luego tengo que estar recargando la página para que, para que funcione. Entonces, eh, han sido situaciones que, que han estado pasando y pues... Ajá, ¿verdad? Se pide o se solicita que un poco de paciencia por ratos, ya media vez ingresan en el caso que les pase eso, ¿verdad? Que les falla así, media vez ingresan ya no hay mucho problema, o sea, ya estando dentro del sistema en sí de la plataforma, ya como que la mayoría de los, de los enlaces funcionan de forma correcta, pero a veces pasa eso. Eh, a mí casi que todos los días, quizás es de suerte que, que yo pueda entrar a la plataforma y que no me tarde en que me esté cargando la página, pero pues, ajá. Eso es algo que está pasando bastante. Así que, eh, pedirles, pues sí, ¿verdad? El comprender que a veces hay sistemas que se ponen un poquito lentos y pues tenemos problemitas por ratos. Pero bueno, um, muy bien. Entonces, inversión, interesante. So, investing money, it is always, I think, a smart thing to do because, I mean, of course, you have to look forward, look to the future and see um, what's coming. So, great. If you had the time and money to invest, Um, that is an amazing way of spending the weekend, in my opinion. So nice, nice, nice. All right. Um, how about Abby? In your case, how was your weekend? Um, it was a, a kind of awful because I had to went to the hospital because my cat is sick and also I am sick. So Ooh. that. What does your cat have and what do you have? Um, 
is uh, um, they made exams for for him, and I just I think I I have um, I don't know what do you say gripe cold uh, a cold oh okay well. Hopefully you and your cat, you know, can get better soon because, yeah, it's never um, nice to um, to be sick. So great. I mean, spending the, the, the weekend going to the doctor or going to different doctors is not necessarily the best way of spending the weekend. But still, hopefully you guys get better soon. All right, moving on. How about we hear now from Gabriela Garcia? I think that the other Gabby hasn't joined yet. No, we only have you right now, Garcia. But yeah. How was your weekend? Uh, it was a little bit tired because yesterday um, my best friend grandma died. So we have to move on to San Miguel on for about, um, I think like 7 p.m. to San Miguel. And we returned to San Salvador but about 4 a.m. So it was a little bit tired. Yeah, that sounds tough. Yeah. That sounds really tough. Yeah, and where in San Miguel were you last night? In Lolotique. It's, oh. It is not... Yeah, in... north of the city. Yeah. Uh-huh, north of San Miguel. I mean, San Miguel Centro. Yeah, Lolotique. It's a very colorful uh, town. It's it's a nice town, but yeah, the situation, you know, was was sad. So it, yeah, it wasn't for visiting. Yeah, for yeah, no. for for yeah, it's a it's a nice town, but still, yeah, uh, that doesn't matter when you come to that kind of uh, that kind of activity. Um, but yeah, sad. Yeah. Um, hopefully, you know, your friend, um, she or he gets in a in a what you call it. Ah, se me olvidó cómo se decía, pero el... Like resignation or something Yeah, like that. that thing, yeah, yeah. So, pero no, es que hay una palabra específica, pero igual ahorita se me ha olvidado. Me la voy a buscar más tarde, más tarde se las digo. Bueno, um, but yeah, so she hopefully, or he hopefully, you know, falls into that, and uh, his whole family or her whole family will feel better um, now that she's resting. But yeah, well, moving on. Um, how about we hear from Sandra? How was your weekend, Sandra? In my case, I had a visit. Um, I have a homework. I have to work. So I have a busy weekend. Well, yeah, that's that's not uh, the best way of spending the weekend either. Um, well, depending if you like to study, maybe. But if you're not, you know, a huge uh, studying fun, I think it's not the best way of spending the weekend. It will be much better, you know, um, to do some other sort of, uh, of activity. But it is for a benefit in the future, after all. Studying is not bad. I mean, but it's not just a fun thing to do. But yeah, well, hopefully, you know, in a while, you're going to have more time to do more more fun stuff. All right, moving on. How about in your case? How was your weekend, um, Liliana? Oh, sorry, Lilian. So my weekend was very hard for me because I, I had a, a time to clean deeply my house. Mm -hmm. So, and I was cleaning since the, since the morning, until the night for two for the three days wow. <laughs> i i only take i only took took uh, yeah some a, a couple of hours to watch one movie and that was the only thing that i did for rest <laughs> wow and the yeah. other part of the time i was cleaning that is <laughs> It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, those are also things that are necessary to do sometimes, you know. Um, cleaning is, is part of life. And uh, 
something that I was thinking when you were mentioning that you had to clean the whole three days is that um, you can also refer to things like that. That you went on, podríamos decir así directamente, ¿verdad? I went on a cleaning spree. Sí, uy, perdón. Cleaning spree. Cleaning Clean. spree. Ahorita lo voy a mandar. I, I went on a cleaning spree. Sí. Cuando utilizamos la palabra spree, de lo que estamos hablando básicamente es como de una racha. Eh, básicamente eso sería, ¿verdad? Going on a spree es eh, cuando tenemos como um, una racha, un periodo en el cual algo no se, no se detiene. Entonces eso sería, ¿sí? Going on a cleaning spree es como que, ajá, estuve limpiando todos los días. Um, podríamos decir que I went on a bad luck spree, o sea, como que tuve una racha de mala suerte. Y si soy sincero, este, este término se usa mucho, mucho más también en los videojuegos, ¿verdad? Cuando hablamos como, por ejemplo, de uh, que fue en una racha de, de que gané mucho, o sea, diría un winning spree, o si no, los videojuegos que son uh, de um, shooters, o sea, de, 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 de disparos, sería un killing spree. Entonces, para hablar acerca de eso, de las rachas, de los tiempos en los cuales um, algo está sucediendo como de la misma forma por un periodo sostenido de tiempo, sería un spree. Así que going on a, clean, on a cleaning okay. spree sería, ajá, ¿verdad? Que estuve pues de racha limpiando. Sí, estuve okay. enrachada en y con la escoba. Bueno, all right, but it's fun. I mean, cleaning sometimes can be fun. So, um, ahora, la otra parte que yo sí me pregunto, si le tomó tres días limpiar la casa, ¿cómo estaba la casa? No, it was a deeply, deeply clean. So, oh. I, I went to the closet and I watched the kind of clothes I had and I said, oh, I, I don't you need You had to this. throw some things away? Ah, pues por eso se tardó tres días, porque era como que este vestido no lo quiero dejar ir, pero ya no me lo pongo. <laughs> sí, así sí cuesta más. Si es así, entonces sí, ya, ya he estado ahí. Camisas que te, cuando tenía 14 años y digo, no, pero todavía me queda socada, pero me entra. <laughs> bueno, ok. Yeah. So yeah, that's nice. I mean, cleaning is not that bad. All right. Um, two last people of the night. Let's see if we can hear from Walter. How about you, Walter? How was your weekend? Hello, good, good evening. Evening. Uh, the last weekend I, I went to the supermarket with my family. Okay. Uh, to, to buy groceries Great. For, for the week. All right. Nice. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. Muy bien. Um, para simplificar esa frase, digamos que en el caso que ustedes quieran hacerlo así, ¿verdad? Simplemente podríamos decir, I did groceries. Es cierto que para nosotros suena un tanto extraño por la palabra groceries, pero podríamos decirlo así nada más. I did groceries. Ahora, cuando tenemos alguna cosa específica que queramos mencionar, eh, cuando tenemos, digamos, algo así como bien, ¿cómo decirlo? Como bien específico, ¿verdad? Que, que yo quiera mencionar que fui a comprar, ahí sí es cuando yo utilizo el I went to the supermarket y ahí digo, ¿verdad? Que fue lo que compré. En cambio, si voy de compras eh, así por, por um, pues básicos del hogar, Simplemente podríamos decir así, I did groceries this weekend, o I have to do groceries, en el caso que tengamos que ir al súper, ¿verdad? A comprar eh, la comida o los básicos, pues decimos I have to do groceries. Entonces, pero cuando usamos el I went to the supermarket, podría ser como I went to the supermarket to get batteries for my uh, remote, podría ser. Um, por otro lado, aparte del do groceries, tenemos el go shopping, que bueno, ya sé que muchos de ustedes lo han escuchado, lo conocen y hasta lo usamos, ¿verdad? Eh, nosotros, o sea, en la cultura general ya casi que muchos decimos, ah, sí, voy de shopping. Entonces, pero cuando hablamos de go shopping es diferente, muy diferente al um, to do groceries, porque go shopping es más como hacer compras por placer, o sea, comprar cosas que no necesariamente son vistas como necesarias. Pueden ser esto electrónicos, pueden ser esto la ropa, pueden ser esto um, zapatos, cosas así, que eh, no son estrictamente necesarios, al menos no para la alimentación. 
Entonces, eso sería un go shopping. Por otro lado, también está el decir go shopping solo cuando vamos a vitrinear. Entonces, um, podría ser, ¿verdad? Go shopping. Y tenemos la otra, que es una frase que muchas personas encuentran um, interesante, porque es bastante útil también, que es el um, run errands. ¿Sí? Run errands, que significa, pues, li no literal, pero en sentido, ¿verdad?, eh, de darle una, una formación al español sería hacer mandados. O sea, cuando ustedes, por ejemplo, tienen que ir a comprar medicina, que tienen que ir a pagar algún recibo, que tienen que pasar a recoger algún paquete, o sea, cualquier cosa así que sea un mandadito es un run errands, ¿sí? Y cuando vamos a la tiendita de la esquina, pues solamente es I went to the convenience store. ¿Sí? En ese caso se dice así directamente, go to the convenience store. Pero run errands Sería básicamente todas esas actividades que no son um, como tan específicas y que tal vez no queremos explicar qué fue todo lo que hicimos, sino que solo decimos, ¿verdad? Oh, yeah, I was running some errands. Sí, estaba haciendo mandados. I was running some errands. Y bueno, so last person of the night on sh sharing about their weekend. I think it's going to be Jenny. So tell us, Jenny, how was your weekend? Hi, good evening. Evening. I had a good a good weekend because I rest three days. I haven't been able to, to do it for a long time. And I spend my time my time uh, in a, in my home with my my pets. Uh, only yesterday that I, we went with my family to to drink a coffee cup. Oh, that's great. I mean, still, it's part of resting. You know, you can count it as resting. So nice. Very nice. Yeah, you, I think it was a great idea, you know, to have that extra day on Friday because uh, I think that normally, I don't know if you guys know about that, but I have heard that some countries in Latin America, specifically Chile, um, is starting to make like a new order in terms of like how much a person is supposed to work and how long a person um, is supposed to rest. Like, Having three days to rest is more advisable than having only two because, I mean, with, with Saturday, yes, we can do some cooling down, but on Sunday, it's like we feel like, okay, we have to go back to work right away. So it's, it doesn't really help a lot, you know, to rest only two days sometimes. Um, but I think it would be a great idea for, for us to have some extra time for resting because that will help, you know, our families, that will help. Um, many things I feel because it is the same here. I hadn't had the time in a long time of resting for a while because, well, I, I basically had to rest. I had to stay home because of my eye. Uh, but it was kind of cool because spending time with my family or more time with them was healing to some extent. So yeah, it's it, it will be great, you know, to have more more times like that. But, well, we're not here to change the world. We are here to do it in a little, in a, a tiny way, but by learning a new language. That is our main mission. And tonight we're going to continue taking steps towards that goal. Um, so if you guys remember, we have this over here, which was a reading about extended families. I did read it one time um, last week, but tonight we are going to be practicing all together. Um, I will be calling for participants in a while. I will like to hear from you and to see how well you guys can pronounce and read this paragraph. The main objective is to have all of you read it. I know that some people might not feel completely ready. My advice is that you try to read it as your classmates are reading it. Sí, es básicamente mi idea sería poder escucharlos a todos, todos, todos leer este párrafo. Aquellos que tal vez no se sientan tan seguros de cómo se pronuncia algo, traten de ir leyendo con sus compañeros y prestando atención a las partes, ¿verdad? A cómo se va pronunciando. Esta vez, bueno, esta vez les aviso desde ahorita, voy a hacer algo que muchas, muchos grupos me han solicitado cuando terminamos las clases y es que me dicen, no, profe, es que usted sí nos ayuda, pero es que nunca nos dice mira, te equivocaste en esto, a mí no me gusta decirles se equivocó en esto, 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 porque se siente feo, al menos para mí, se siente feo pero esta noche lo voy a hacer voy a probar a ver cómo, cómo sale verdad eh, cuando cometamos errores, el decirles de forma directa you made a mistake here, 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 here 
Y de esa forma ustedes también van a ir formándose la idea de cómo podemos pronunciar mejor las cosas. Um, pero bueno, prestar atención a aquellos que tal vez no se sientan tan listos, que digan, no, hombre, a mí me va a costar, mientras lo hacen, ¿verdad?, los que, los que vayan participando primero. Y ya luego, como les digo, la idea sería que todos tengamos la oportunidad de leerlo, porque quiero escuchar, ¿verdad?, cómo nos va con la lectura. Antes de eso, simplemente recordar un poco de lo que hablábamos también acerca de las familias. Um, solo una pronunciación rápida de los nombres que componen la familia. We have the great-grandfather, great-grandmother, great-uncle, great-grandfather, grandmother, great-aunt, uncle, aunt, father and mother, sister, brother-in-law, brother, sister-in-law, um, husband, wife, cousin, cousin's wife, first cousins once removed, a nephew, a niece, a son, a daughter, a, sorry, daughter-in-law, and also a son-in-law. So those are like the main, main characters when it comes to talking about the family. But we still have others. Sí, tenemos esos son los principales, pero igual hay algunos otros que son parte de la familia extendida. Quiero primero sacar esto del camino para así tener, digamos, el resto del tiempo disponible para la lectura. Entonces, extended families. We can also have a father-in-law, mother-in-law, que esto no estaba necesariamente mencionado, ¿verdad?, en, en la gráfica. Aquí no necesariamente vemos el mother-in-law ni el father-in-law, eh, que son también los que les decía, que muchas personas tienen la costumbre que ya cuando están casados no le llaman father-in-law ni mother-in-law, sino que simplemente le dicen father and mother. Um, si la relación no es tan buena, ahí sí se utiliza el in-law. Esa es una, como una marca de digamos, el estilo de relación que puedan tener ustedes con sus suegros o suegras. Si le dicen mother-in-law, se va a entender, ¿verdad? Que, o sea, mother-in-law cuando se refieren a ella, conste. Porque si estamos hablando en público, tampoco. O si sea, estamos hablando con amigos, no le vamos a decir my mom o my mother. Y, y luego las personas se queden como, ¿qué, qué? Si tu mamá se murió por decir algo. Entonces si ustedes dicen, ah, sí, mi mamá estaba aquel día en la casa. Y es como que no. Estamos hablando de la suegra, entonces ahí sí, ¿verdad? Diríamos my mother-in-law cuando estemos eh, con otras personas. Pero esto, el consejo de decirle mother and father es cuando nos referimos a ellos. Sí, le podemos decir mother and father si tenemos una buena relación, pero si le decimos mother in law, father in law, es como que no tenemos quizás la mejor relación. Bueno, um, luego tenemos partner. Partner es una palabra muy común, se utiliza para hablar acerca pues, de los compañeros de vida, eh, principalmente pues, para las personas que no sean Casado, ¿verdad? Que simplemente viven juntos, pero no necesariamente están casados. Entonces, that will be your partner. Con ese partner también se puede utilizar en otros contextos, cuando estemos hablando acerca de compañeros en equipos de trabajo, eh, ya sea en el, traba en el trabajo de literalmente o en la escuela, pero partner eh, va se va a referir a eso, ¿verdad? Como un compañero. Nunca le digan a llamar partner a un compañero de clase, en ese caso es clase, pero pues sí, ¿verdad? Partner. Uh, luego tenemos el fiance. Ambas palabras se pronuncian de la misma forma. La diferencia que existe es para quién se usa cuál. Fiance para um, for men and fiance for women. Sí. ¿Y alguien sabe qué es un fiance? Eh, prometido. Prometido. Ok. Yo escuché ahí entrometido. ¿Qué? No, no, no. Sí. Es el, el prometido o la prometida. Entonces, yes, fiance, my fiance. Uh, then we have a godfather. Sí, ese es un padrino, godfather and godmother. Godfather, godmother. Sorry, padrino y madrina. Y luego tenemos los steps. Stepmother, stepfather, step siblings. Siblings es la palabra que utilizamos para hablar acerca de hermanos y hermanas, ¿verdad? Cuando tenemos eh, de ambos géneros, uh, pues vamos a decir siblings. Y en ese caso, pues, estamos diciendo mi hermano y mi hermana a la misma vez. Sí, siblings. O bueno, estamos diciendo, perdón, hermanos. Así, literal. Entonces, en cambio, stepmother, eso es una madrastra. Y stepfather es un padrastro. Step siblings sería los hermanastros. Ahí lo podemos dividir claramente a decir step um, brother, step sister. Eh, por otro lado, vienen todo el resto de los steps. Así como tenemos la familia regular, también tenemos el resto de los steps. O sea, ustedes pueden tener step aunt, pero como les decía, no es lo más común, ¿verdad? O sea, el utilizar el step puede ser como un sentido de ofensa. Se puede entender de esa forma. O sea, si ustedes le dicen a alguien, oh, ya, yeah, that's my step aunt. Eh, 
se puede tomar como si fuese una, una ofensa hacia la persona, como por así decirlo, ah, sí, o sea, no me cae bien, digamos. Algo así se podría entender, ¿verdad? El decir step, this step, that, directamente a la persona. Es mejor, o le decimos el nombre, o le decimos de una vez solo tía o tío. Si vamos a, a tratarlos de esa forma, mejor decirle solo aunt y, o uncle. Uh, o si no, pues simplemente nos referimos a ellos con el nombre. Lo mismo con los suegros. Esa era la otra cosa que se me había pasado a mencionar. Que con los suegros también, ¿verdad? Nos podemos simplemente referir a ellos con el nombre. Eh, en inglés no está mal visto. O sea, no es algo que sea malo. En español es muy común que nosotros simplemente decimos, oh, sí, mi suegro, mi suegra. Um, pero en inglés es, o sea, a ellos también, ¿verdad? A los suegros le decimos suegro, suegra. Pero no es tan común que les digamos el nombre necesariamente. Sí, pero en, en inglés sí. Y, o sea, le decimos el nombre como, como amigos. No existe, digamos, necesariamente la necesidad de decirle, oye, oh, Miss um, Juanita y, y Mr. Ernesto. No, sino que Ernesto y Juanita, de una. Entonces, básicamente estos serían otros de los componentes en una familia exten extendida. Uh, and now we're going to move back into the reading. Sí, vamos una vez más, ahora sí, a lo de la lectura. Um, vayan pensando quiénes quieren ser los primeros que van a participar. Yo lo que voy a hacer de momento va a ser darle lectura una vez más para tener, verdad, ya la idea mucho, mucho más clara. Bueno, so we have extended families consist of generations of generations of people and can include biological parents and um, their children, as well as in-laws, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Extended families are typically of collective cultures where all families, mem family members are interdependent and share family responsibilities, including children roles. Extended families often value the wider kin group more than individual relationships, which can lead to loyalty issues within the family and also cause difficulties in a couple's relationship where a close relationship between the husband and wife may be seen as a threat to the wider kin group. Another factor that can add to the complexity of relationships in an extended family is the need to negotiate the expectations and needs of each family member. Complex extended family relationships can also detract from the parent-child uh, parent relationship. Complex intergenerational relationships can complicate the child-parent relationship as they can cause confusion regarding the identity of, primary, of the primary parent. Such confusion can result in a child undermining the authority of her existing parent and feeling uncertain about her environment. Muy bien. Noté por ahí que Lilian tenía la mano alzada. No sé si era una duda o si es que está lista para ser la primera en leer. Yes, you can correct me all that you want. <laughs> All right, no, no problem. I mean, we're here to help. It's not, it's not that I'm going to be mean. O sea, tampoco es que voy a ser malo, sino como, pues sí, verdad. Es que varios grupos me han dicho, profe, que usted, yo me siento que me equivoco y usted no me dice que me equivoque en esto y en lo otro. Entonces hoy pensé, bueno, qué mejor momento para ser malo. No, okay. <laughs> so, Lilian, uh, whenever you feel ready, you may start reading. Okay. Uh, ex extended families. Extended families consist of several generation of people and can include biological parents and their children as well as in-law, grandparents, aunt, uncles, and cousins. Extended families are typical of collective cultures where all family members are interdependent and share family responsibilities, including childbearing roles. Extended families often value the wider kid, king group more than individual relationship, which can lead to loyalty issues within the family and also cause difficulties in a couple relationship where a close relationship between a husband and a wife may be seen as a threat to the wider king group. Another factor that can add to the complexity of relationship in an extended family is the need 
to negotiate the expectation and needs of each family member. Complex extended family relationship can also distract, detract from the parent-child relationship. Complex intergenerational <laughs> complex complex intergenerational relationships can <laughs> can come can complicate the child parent relationship as they can cause confusion regarding the identity of the primary parent such confusion confusion can result in a child undermining the authority of her existing parent and the feeling uncertain about her environment. ¿Cuántas palabras cree que voy a mencionar? Mm, ¿20? Nada, <laughs> demasiado. Cinco nada más. Ok. okay. Y son pequeños los errores. Uh, within. Esta, within. Sí, within. 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 Within, sí. Within, que es casi por dentro, ¿verdad? Como al interior. Issues within. Uh, tenemos también por acá, esta es threat. Sí, se parece mucho. Y yo entiendo que, se, que lo digamos treat, se parece mucho a la palabra treat, pero no es treat. Esta es threat. Esta es una amenaza. Threat. Sí, threat. Amenaza. Threat. Uh -huh. Threat. Um, luego tenemos esta, ¿verdad? Intergenerational. Esta es, o sea, es, es larga, no normal, sí. Intergenerational. Intergenerational. Y luego tenemos por acá undermining, sí. La palabra undermining. Y la otra, el problema es que yo tengo unos gráficos aquí, por eso es que estoy quitando y poniendo esto porque no la puedo ver. Let me see. Ah, sí, uncertain. A ver, no, uncertain, uncertain. Eh, eso que dije antes, o sea, es un, sí está bien, está bien que lo digan así como yo lo dije, uncertain, pero es una costumbre, digamos, si yo les enseño que así se dice, si yo les digo, así lo tienen que decir, eso estaría mal de mi parte, porque la palabra es regularmente uncertain, sí, uncertain. Um, yo le digo uncertain porque eh, es parte del acento que, que yo tengo y es un acento del norte, ¿verdad? De, de Estados Unidos, donde muchas palabras que terminan así con n, la gente como que las hace nasales, o sea, literal nasales. Ustedes escuchan uncertain y o sea, la nariz es la que suena, la nariz es la que queda ahí el, el sonido ahí, ¿verdad? Entonces, sería malo que yo les diga, díganlo así, porque entonces estaría forjando también de una vez ya su acento de, de, de qué parte va a sonar. Eso es algo ya extra que cada quien se puede forjar con el tiempo, no es una cosa, ¿verdad? Que ni que lo van a generar ahorita mismo ustedes pero que sí puede ser problema si yo le digo, no, lo tiene que decir de esta forma. Pero bueno, esas serían. Within, uh, threats, intergenerational, undermining, and uncertain. Muy bien, ahora sí, Jenny. Extended families consist of several generations of people and can include biological parents and their children, as well as in law grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Extend families are typical or of collective culture, cultures where all family members are independent and share family responsibilities, including children roles. Children roles. Mm -hmm. Extend families often value, value, value the wider king group more than individual relationships, which can lead to loyalty issues within the family and also cause difficulties and in a couple's relationship, where a close relationship between a husband and wife may be, may be seen as a threat to the wider king group. Another factor that can add to the complexity of relationships in uh, extended families is the, is the need to negotiate the expectation and need to each family member's complex 
complex extended fam family relationship can also detract from the parent-child relationship. Complex intergenerational <laughs> complex intergenerational uh, intergenerational <laughs> relationship can complicate complicate the child parent relationship as they can cause confusion regarding in the in the in the identity of the primary parent. Such confuse, confusion can result in a child undermining the authority of the existing exceeding exceeding parent and feeling uncertain about her environment. Okay, great, nice, very, very nice. ¿Cuántas palabras creo que fueron? Jenny? Y Jenny no, de todas. Five, five, five. <laughs> no, bueno, en este caso, las que más fueron tres, nada más. Sí, esta de acá sería complexity. Complex. Complexity. complexity. Es más larguita, o sea, usted dijo complex city. Oh. Ajá, es complexity. 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 Ajá, complexity. complexity. Porque lo de children eh, se dijo, sí. O sea, podría ser, pero se dijo children. Um, la otra era esta, de existing. Sí, ese es fácil. Exciting. Solo que decir, ¿verdad? Ajá, es, no me acuerdo, dijo como exciting, no sé qué, pero no, existing. Ex existing. Existing. Ajá, y la okay. de uncertain. Sí, uncertain. Um, porque no es con okay. E, sino con A. Sí, parece que se escribe con E. Pero es con A que suena. Es un certain. Sí, un certain. Ajá, por ahí va. Un certain. Muy bien. Great. Very Thanks, good job. The rest was great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Abby. Um, extended families consist of several generations of people and can include biological parents and their children, as well as in laws, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Extended families are typical of collective cultures where all family members are interdependent, interdependent and share family responsibilities, including children roles. Extended family often value the wider kind group more than individual relationship, which can lead to loyalty issues within the family and also cause difficulties in a couple's relationship where a close relationship between a husband and wife may be seen in a threat to the winner with can group. Another fact that can add to the complexity of relationship in extended family is the need to negotiate the expectation and needs to each family member. Complex extended family relationship can also detract from the parent-child relationship. Complex intergenerational relationship can complicate the child-parent relationship as they can cause confusion regarding the identify of the primary parents. Such confusions can result in a child undermining the authority of her existing parent and feeling un uncertain about her environment. Great, you were very, very quick. Muy, muy rápido y muy bien. Um, solo fueron pequeños los detalles. Uh, esta es wider, sí, wider. Cuando estamos hablando como de el más amplio, sí, wider king group sería como el Um, grupo sanguíneo extenso. O sea, básicamente es una forma diferente de decir familia, ¿verdad? Um, sí. La otra es un par de plurales. Sí, un par de plurales que se nos fueron. Aquí, por ejemplo, este di dijo individual relationship y sería relationships. O sea, pero solamente eso, la S, ¿verdad? Nada más no es como que fue tan complicado. Um, luego también con esta de acá, ¿dónde está? Identity. Sí, identity. Um, se nos puede decir identify, <ríe> pero igual, <ríe> identity. Um, y creo que, ¿cuál? Creo que esas eran nada más. Sí, me parece que esas eran. Excelente con intergenerational, o sea, no hubo problemas ahí, así que muy bien, muy buen trabajo. All right, uh, let's hear from Rosa now. So, Rosa Hernández, whenever you're ready, you may start reading. Exchange family consists of several generations of people and, and can include, include um, 
Violai, viol... ¿Cómo se pronuncia? ¿Mm? ¿Cómo se pronuncia? Perdón, es que esa palabra está detrás de un gráfico. Oh, biological. Uh -huh. Biological. Biological. Uh, parent and the children as way as uh, in law. Grandparent out on and the coaxing. Extended family are typical of coke TV. Um, culture where a family member are independent and the share family responsibility, including children rollet, extended family of value the wooden heat grow more than in the in the village relationship which can lead to to use it with with the family and also causing difficult in couples this is a couples a couple relationship were close in a relationship within a husband and wife. Maybe I think I dream to the weather. Keep a growth, another factor that can add the complexity of relationship and extended family is, is the need to to negotiate the expansion and a um, need of each family member complete exchange family relationship con us and also distract from the parents relationship complete internal international relationship can complete the children parent the parent Related as the causing confusion, we are doing the identity of the primary parent. So, confusion can, uh, um, can result a child under the authority of excited parent and the feeling uncertainty about her. Boy. All right, nice, very nice. So the few words that we got, um, you know, uh, there, there were, for example, um, let me see, this one over here, collective. It was, it was, um, collective. Um, then we have children. No, children. I think it was okay. Roles was the one that we misspelled over there. Oh. Roles. Um, then we also had wider. See wider. Yeah. Que se está acá, wider. Um, and uh, I, I, nos pasó lo mismo también que anteriormente, esta de identity, sí, en lugar de identify, sería identity. Y mm -hmm. undermining, sí, undermining. Esas serían mm -hmm. como las, las principales. El resto, buen trabajo. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Um, Elizabeth, up you go. Okay. Extended family. An extended family consists of several generations of people and can include biological parents and their children, as well as allowed grandparents, aunt, uncle, and cousin. Extended family are typical of collective culture where all family members are independent and share family responsibility, including children's roles. Extended family often value um, their winter king group um, more than individual relationship, which can lead to loyalty issues within the family and also cause difficult in a couple's relationship, where a close relationship between a husband and wife Maybe seems as a threat 
and uh, winter kind growth. Another factor that can add the complexity, no, complexity of relationship in a standing family is to need to negotiate to expectation and needs for each family members. Complex extended family relationship can also detract from the parent's child relationship. Complex intergenerational relationship uh, can complicate the child's parent and relationship as they can cause confusion, no, confusion, and regarding to identity of the primary parent. Such a confusion can result in a child undermining to auditory and the safety and of her existing parent and feeling uncertain about her environment. Just okay, that. uncertain about her, uh, her environment. Great, nice, that was great. Um, so we went back onto this one, wider, ¿sí? Sería la palabra wider, wider. Cuando hablamos de wide, estamos hablando acerca de ancho. Esta palabra también eh, es, existe en width, que sería el decir, ¿verdad? Hablar acerca de la anchura. Entonces, wider, ¿sí? Esta, um, luego también un par, otra vez un par de, de plurales. Los plurales son complejos, así que es a veces entendible, ¿verdad? Aquí, por ejemplo, el relationships o expectations. O sea, ese a veces es bien importante que se quede un ratito más por ahí. Um, y también aquí la palabra authority. Sí, authority. Pueden usarla con la T o con la R, como a ustedes les parezca mejor. Esa palabra es complicada con la R, así que puede que suene mejor, ¿verdad? Decir authority. Sí, authority. Pero si no, igual, ¿verdad? Pueden decir authority, sí, authority. Bueno, um, con confusion sí estábamos bien, sí era confusion. Muy bien, por ahí vi hace rato que tenía también, a ver, ¿dónde está? Let me see. Uh, Leslie, Leslie estaba alzando la mano al principio, so. Yeah, will you I'm mind? here. Okay, okay. You mind reading? I'm sick, but I will try to talk. Okay. Well, okay. Um, extended family. Um, extended family consists of several generations of people and can include biological parents and their children, as well as in in laws, grandparents, aunts, uncle, and cousin. Um, extended families are typical of collective culture, where all family members are interdependent and share family responsibility, including children roles. Extended family often value the wider kind of group more than individual relationship, <clears throat> which can lead to the loyalty issues within the family and also causes diffi um, difficulties, I think, difficulties. in a couple relationship where a close relationship between a husband and wife may be uh, seen as a threat to the wider kind of group Uh, another factor that can add to the complexity of relationship in an extended family is the need to, to negotiate mm -hmm. the, um, the expectations and the needs of each family member. Complex and standard family relationships can also detract from the parent-child relationship. Complex, um, complex inter intergenerational It's difficult to pronounce that, but intergenerational relationship can complicate the child-parent relationship as they can cause confusion regarding the identify to the primary parents. Such a confusion can result in a child undermining the authority of her existing parents and feeling uncertain about her environment. Very, very nice. Great, great job. All right. So yeah, it's it's kind of hard. You know, it's a it's a yeah. it's a tongue twister <laughs> intergenerational over here. Um now the other advice would be once again, we had some uh, um plurals that were not pronounced, like uncles and cousins, but the rest was pretty, pretty great. Um let's see. Okay. I also noticed a little bit here nego when we have this word, it depends on the like 
the context, like when you're going to use it. Negotiate. That's how you're going to say it in this occasion, to negotiate. Um, uh, and this one. Esta era como la que, la que más, digamos, la única que estuvo como, por decirlo, mal. El detalle es que sí, se parece mucho a la palabra kind. Nos falta la D. Pero en este caso es kin. ¿Sí? Why there oh, okay. kin group? Sería kin, kin group. Kin group, sí. Esto de la palabra kin básicamente se refiere como a una relación sanguínea. O sea, a un grupo de personas que están relacionadas ya sea o por sangre o por ley. Entonces, como les digo, el, el kin group es básicamente una forma diferente de decir familia, ¿verdad? Um, el resto, Leslie, very, very good. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. All right. Uh, do I have uh, one more person who would like to give it a try? Hasta ahorita ningún chico. Veamos, tal vez se nos anima Josué. Y Josué, que no me ve a mí. <laughs> Yo no quiero, dijo Josué. Okay, I try. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Extended families consist of several generations of people and can include biological parents and their children, eh, as well as in laws, grandfathers, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Extended families are typical of collective cultures where our family members are interdependent and share family responsibilities, including child rearing roles. Extended families often value the wider key group more the individual relationships, which can lead to uh, loyalty issues within the family and also cause difficulties and a couple's relationships where a close relationship between a um, husband uh, and wife may be seen as a threat to the wider king group. Another factor that can add to the complexity of relationships in the extended families is the need to negotiate the, the expectation and needs to each family members. Complex extended families relationships can also detract further from the parents-child relationship. Complex intergenerational relationships can complicate the child-parents relationship as they can, as they can cause confusion regarding to identity of the primary parents. Such confusion can result in the child undermining the authority of the existing parents and feeling uncertain about her environment. Muy bien, muy, muy bien. Excelente trabajo, de hecho. Great, very nice. Thank you. I think right now the only thing that you have to add is just once again, eso, pero siento que eso es más exigencia mía, ¿verdad? De los plurales, sí. Un par de S por ahí que se nos pasan, but the rest is very, very good. Y de hecho aquí se me olvidó esta, se me olvidó mencionarse también a, a Leslie, que aquí dijimos identify. Y me quedé pensando quizás la T, o sea, sí es cierto, identify es una palabra bastante común también. Pero quizás la T sí tiene como que a, a formar la F, porque ya llevamos varios que dicen identify en esta parte. Josué, muy bien que no se nos pasó, sino que fue identity. All right, great, very, very good. Muy bien, creo que la última persona que tendrá la chance de participar esta noche será Gabriela. Así que, señorita García, when you're ready, you may start. Okay. Extended families. Extended families consist of, se of several generations of people and can include biological parents and their children as well as in laws, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Extended family are typical of collective culture where all family members are inter interdependent and share family responsibilities, including child roles. Extended families often value the wider kin group more than individual relationships, relationships, which can lead to loyalty issues within the family and also cause difficulties in couples' relationships where a close relationship between a husband and a wife may be seen as a threat to the wider king group. Another factor that can add to the complexity of relationships in an extended family is the need to negotiate the expectation and needs of each family member. 
Complex extended family relationships can also detract from the parent-child relationship. Complex inter intergenerational relationships can complicate the child-parent relationship as they can cause confusion regarding, regarding, regarding mm -hmm. the identity of the primary parent. Such confusion can result in a child undermining the authority of her existing parent and feeling uncertain about the environment. Her environment. Okay, solo la última casi. Uncertain. Uh, sí, uncertain. Fue la, única, fue la única. El resto muy bien. Bueno, intergenerational, pero eh, intergenerational nadie la vea. No está ahí. All right, great, very good job. Me gusta mucho en realidad que estamos haciendo buen trabajo a leer ese tipo de cosas porque que nos encontremos que cuatro o cinco palabras de casi cien, digamos, que puede haber. That's not too bad, see? In my opinion, it's not bad at all. Mostly when readings have uh, words such as relationship, intergenerational, and, you know, complications like those, you guys are doing a pretty good job. I am honestly impressed and I like what I'm hearing here. So please keep it up. And as I said um, last week, when you, whenever you have a time to read a tiny paragraph, go ahead and do it, okay? Go ahead and practice reading because that's going to help you a lot. It's going to help you with fluency, confidence, vocabulary, and many other things. Even expanding your, um, your horizons. Horizons, you guys did, yeah? The horizons, yeah? So please. Please do yourselves that favor. And uh, well, basically for tonight, that will be it. Thank you very much for your attention and participation in this evening's class. I am telling you, I am very glad right now that I got to hear you guys reading. And uh, tomorrow we're going to continue talking more about the lectures. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Okay, till the next one.